Becoming a great coach is not always easy, and success as a player does not guarantee a successful career on the bench. Today, we're going to review some great footballers who, despite their talent on the field, failed to excel as coaches. Rude Gullet is one of the most charismatic footballers of all time. His hairstyle and talent on the pitch are iconic. He won the Champions League with Milan and the Ballon d'Or in 1987. As a coach, he started well, becoming player manager of Chelsea and winning the FA Cup, the club's first title in over 25 years. However, his stint at Newcastle was disastrous, and he subsequently failed with his beloved Feyenoord. He also managed LA Galaxy for less than 20 games, and in a final attempt, lasted three months in the Russian League. Finally, he found his new vocation as a master of ceremonies. Marco Van Basten, three-time Ballon d'Or winner, retired too young at 29. He debuted as a coach almost 15 years later, taking charge of the Netherlands national team. He delivered average performances at the 2006 World Cup in Germany and Euro 2008, but it was all an illusion. At Ajax, he failed miserably and subsequently struggled with Hirenvein and AZ Alkmaar, lasting only five games. Roberto Carlos was perhaps the greatest left back of all time, but as a coach, he was really bad. At least he realized that managing teams wasn't his thing before making a fool of himself. His coaching career lasted only two years, from 2013 to 2015, with a record of 35 wins, 20 draws, and 40 losses. Considered one of the greatest players of all time, Maradona won the 1986 World Cup and earned legendary status. However, his coaching career was inconsistent. Although he had a good stint in Mexico's second division and qualified Argentina for the 2010 World Cup, he didn't achieve anything remarkable. Undoubtedly, his coaching career pales in comparison to his playing achievements. Clarence Seedorf was a top-level player, succeeding with Ajax, Real Madrid, Milan, and Botafogo. As a coach, he tried to replicate this success but only tarnished his reputation. First at Milan, where he lasted six months, then at Shenzhen in China, where he managed 14 games, next at Deportivo La Coruna, where he had a disastrous spell and suffered relegation, and finally with Cameroon's national team, where he failed at the Africa Cup of Nations. Gary Neville, part of Manchester United's golden generation, was an exceptional defender and figure in English football. However, his coaching stint at Valencia was brief and unfortunate. He was sacked on March 30, 2016, leaving the team 14th in the league after 30 games. His coaching record consisted of 10 wins, 7 draws, and 11 losses. Lothar Matthaus, a German football legend and Ballon d'Or winner, has had multiple coaching opportunities with clubs and national teams, but failed. Despite overwhelming evidence against his abilities, Matthaus coached for 10 years, only finding work in lesser-known countries where he never won anything and always left on bad terms. These cases demonstrate that being a great player does not guarantee success as a coach. Although their talent on the field was undeniable, transitioning to the bench brought more challenges than they could handle. Which other player do you think deserves to be on this list? Share your opinion.